Painting long fur in watercolour is always challenging. Painting long dark fur in watercolour I find is even more challenging, which is why I painted a few studies before I painted this Sheltie. One of my patrons reached out and said she was having trouble painting a Shetland Sheepdog and she asked me if I'd make a tutorial. I was planning to paint another long-haired dog for a tutorial so I thought why not make it a Sheltie. Before I painted this painting I painted two studies and I overworked both of them. Then I went ahead and I painted this final painting and I overworked this one too. I realised that after painting the studies this was as good as I'm going to get it so I went ahead and I filmed myself when I painted this third painting. In this video I'll show you how I painted the fur. I prefer to paint on wet paper for most of the painting and then right at the end I paint some detail on dry paper. I use the reference photo as a guide only. I don't have the patience to sit there and methodically try to paint in the hair as I see it on the photo. I prefer to work on the wet paper and let the paint and water work for me as much as I can. I used three colours for this painting, Perylene Violet, Windsor Green Blue Shade and Gold Ochre. I mixed the black from Perylene Violet and Windsor Green because I knew that if I used a pre-mixed black like Lamp Black it would look dead and flat. So I made myself a watery mix of black and I also made a dry palette of really dark black. You'll see me do that in the video. I used Arsh hot pressed watercolour paper for this painting. I used hot pressed paper for no particular reason other than for the fact that I have a heap of it here at home and I want to use it up. Cold pressed paper is perfectly fine to use as well. I downloaded the reference photo from Pixabay and it was taken by Jackie Liu. I started by painting some gold ochre onto the background. I wet the paper first before I put the paint on and I lifted my board off the table to make the paint flow and drip. I've let it sit for a little while. It's not as wet as it was. It's starting to dry. So I'm going to get some water on my brush and just splash it on and create a few watercolour blooms to add interest to the background. What I need to do now is let that sit and dry of its own accord. And here it is after I came back to it. It's dry now and it's ready for me to start painting the dog. I'm going to use the Perylene Violet and the Windsor Green to make black for the dog. I decided to mix my own black because when you use a pre-mixed black it tends to look a bit flat looking. So I thought that these two colours would make an interesting black. They're both transparent colours and they're both staining. So together they should make a really strong black for me. I'm mixing them into this little palette because I want a watery mix of black that won't be too dark and I also want a dry palette of black. So this is my watery mix of black. This will be the lightest black that I see on the dog. I'll test it on some scrap paper first and that looks pretty good. So I will use this as the lightest colour on the dog. Now I want to make up my dry palette. So my palette is completely dry, there's no moisture on it. This is the green. I'm using an old brush to spread it out. I don't want to dig at the pigment with my good brushes. So I spread it out and then I'll put some of the perylene violet over the top of it while it's wet. Get the violet now. And I mix the two together like that. So it's pure pigment, no water. The only water that's there is the little bit of water that I had on my brush. Give them a good mix. 
can see why I'm using my older brush here. The paint is sticky and I didn't want to risk damaging my good brushes. What I'll do in a moment is get my hair dryer and dry this paint. I got my hair dryer out and I dried that paint with it. So that's completely dry now. That's my dry palette and this is my wet palette. Everything's dry. I want to get a little bit of grey onto the white fur at the front. I want to paint that on wet paper, so this is water that I'm painting on. I'll use my watery mixture of black paint. I paint that onto the wet paper and I try not to fuss with it too much. The water on the paper will disperse the pigment for me. This is white fur that I'm painting, so I don't want to put too much paint on it. When I put the wet paint on the wet paper, I make sure my brush isn't sopping wet when I pick the paint up. It needs to have a bit of moisture in it, but not too much. There's water in the paint, there's water on the paper, so I can leave a little bit of water out of the brush. I need to leave quite a bit of white paper showing, as I said, because this is white fur. Okay, now I think I'd like to get some colour onto the face. And again, I'll use the light watery black that I mixed. This is the lightest black that I see on the dog. I can see that my colour won't be dark enough but I didn't want to go too dark too quickly. I'll get the paint on there and establish where it sits and then I'll darken it later. I've now wet the paper down the side of the dog and I'm using that watery black here as well. I dab the paint on and let the water on the paper move the pigment. And I do the same thing up the other side. I wet the paper and then put the paint on. All I'm doing is establishing the shape of the dog and some of the fur markings. I'll have to build over the top of this and make it darker as I go. So I've established where the black fur will sit, where the tan coloured fur sits and where the white fur sits. Now I have to start building up the colour and I need to start adding some detail. Now I want to start using my dry palette. So I use my wet brush to pick up the paint. And I start painting the left ear in. I've wet the ear with water and when I put the water on, I extended it past the edges of the ear. I've done that because I want the paint to drift past the edges of my pencil lines. I've used some masking fluid on some of the hair inside the ear, you can see it there. When I pick the paint up, I'll pick it up in a different spot each time. So where I picked it up before, that area is wet because my brush was damp. When I pick it up this time, I'll choose a different spot. I'll be using this dry palette for most of the painting now. The reason I use it is because the paint is thicker and drier. When I put it on the paper, it's not going to spread as far. So I'm going to have more control of where it goes. So this is my way of painting dry on wet paper. Here again, I pick the paint up in a dry area. And then I keep going. You can see I've got the burgundy or the perylene violet showing there on the ear. That's because I might have picked the paint up in an area where I had more of the violet. Here it looks a bit greener, so I've picked the paint up where it's a bit greener. And that's okay. That's adding interest to my black. It's making my painting look more interesting instead of using a flat black colour. Now I'm extending the hair past the edges of the ear. You can see it's drifting by itself because of the water, but now I want some longer hair. So I flick it out onto the water. 
I quite like that edge there, the way the paint has drifted, so I'll leave that. I won't fuss with that area. Here I've done a bit more work. I've painted in the other ear and I've painted in some different coloured fur down the side. Now I'm starting to deepen the colour of the black fur on the right hand side of the dog. And I'm still working on wet paper with my dry paint. You can see it's giving me those fuzzy edges, which is what I want. I've also put a bit more colour onto the head or face of the dog. Then I do the same thing over here. I wet the paper. I wet the paper further than where I'll be putting the paint. And then I start in with my dark black paint. This is from my dry palette. I'm starting to deepen the colour. Okay, now I'm going to start to pull some of that out to create some longer bits of fur. Here's where I've got to remember to pull the fur the other way. So from out back into the dog. I have to do that because when you lift your brush on the wet paper you get those round circles of paint. So it's better if you pull it in towards the dog the way I'm doing it here. I'll show you what I mean by that a bit more closely. I've just wet the paper with some water. I'll paint on an area. Imagine this is the edge of the dog that I've already painted. And now I want to extend some longer hair past that edge. Normally what I do is take it from the dog out. When I lift my brush I get that little circle of paint forming all the time whenever I lift my brush. So what I need to do is pull it the other way. So instead of taking it from the dog out I need to take it from out back in towards the dog. Out in and lift. Out in and lift. And that way you can't see the circle of paint that's forming. Now I've got my little Rosemary and Co eradicator brush and I'm using it to remove some paint. Underneath the black paint I've got some lighter colours from when I painted the background and when I painted the different coloured fur on the side of the head. I use this little brush while it's damp, the paper is dry and it removes some of the darker paint revealing the lighter paint underneath. So here I can lengthen these little bits of hair. Dark colours can be disturbed very easily, which is why it's coming off quite easily there with that damp brush. So I can lengthen those and make them look a bit more natural looking. Now I want to darken this patch of fur here. So this is water. And this is the black from the dry palette again. Painting carefully up there so I can create some little hair shapes, tufts of hair. So I've painted them in negatively, I painted around them. I'll see if I can get my brush in between here as well carefully. And now I can relax a bit. So the bulk of it is wet, but where I'm flicking my brush, the paper is dry. You can see it's not moving. Just painting carefully around that hair. And then I keep pulling it down further. Where I'm painting now, the paper's pretty dry. It was mainly wet up further up when I was painting around those little bits of hair. Here I'm starting to add some more detail to the left hand side, painting over the area that I painted before, but you can still see it in the background. It gives me those fuzzy edges there. And then I continue on down the side of the dog. I'm using the dark black paint from the dry palette and my paper is wet here.
those lighter layers that I painted earlier, you'll see parts of them showing through this layer of paint that I'm painting now. I'm not going to completely cover them over, or there was no point in painting them. Those previous layers will help to add some depth to the painting. Towards the end of the painting, I work more on dry paper as I start to darken areas and define details. I'm working on dry paper here with a bit more of the black from my dry palette. All I'm doing is layering it over the top to darken that area a bit more. I might pull a bit of it towards the eye though. I see a darker patch there on the reference photo. Just picked a bit more paint up. Paper is dry here too. I've only got a small amount of paint on my brush, it's not a lot. You can see all I'm doing is making it slightly darker. I'm going to turn my board so that I can paint a few hairs coming off the top of the ear. At the moment the paint that's on there was painted on wet paper so I've got those fuzzy edges. So I'm going to go over the top of it on dry paper. This is the black from the dry palette and the paper's dry. How do I know when I'm nearly finished? That's when I start to look for things that I need to do. I held it up in front of the mirror so that I could see it with fresh eyes. And down here it looked to me like I could go a little bit darker. So I've just wet that with water and I'm dabbing a bit more paint on there, the black paint. And there it is finished. I'd had enough at this stage and I thought I'm not going to get it any better than this. There are different ways to paint long fur in watercolour. This is my way and I hope that this was helpful to you. I have posted the full length 83 minute tutorial of this painting on my Patreon site. So head there if you'd like to see more. Please give this video a like and be sure to subscribe because I post watercolour videos like this one every week. I'll see you next week. You'll see me do that in the video. I used Arsh hot pressed watercolour paper for this painting. I used hot pressed paper for no, no, for no, no, for no, no particular reason. Painting long fur in watercolour is always, oh, I'm looking at myself again. Paper and let the paint and the water work for me as much as I can. I used three colours. Six. I used three colours for this painting. I need a drink. I mixed the black from Perylene Violet and Windsor Green because I knew that if I mixed a pre-mixed black I knew if I mixed a pre-mixed black I mixed the black from Perylene Violet and Windsor Green. But why not make it a Sheltie? Before I painted this painting, I painted two studies. Because I knew if I used a pre-mixed black, like lamp black, it would look fat and dead looking. Flat and dead looking. Flat, flat, not fat, flat. Start again.